everybody, everybody, I'm back. Everybody, Jeannie Young is back and I'm back with yet another amazing recipe. I am so excited yet another day because today at the Young's house, Gina Young is going to share with you all how easy it is to make butternut squash. There are so many people that has never heard of butternut squash, never tried it. Well, here's what it looks like, and I cannot wait to share with you all this recipe. So you're gonna need a butternut squash, all depending on how many people you wanna feed. That's gonna depend on how many you want to purchase. You're gonna need some oil. So we have some vegetable oil here and a couple of spices to make this thing taste good. We're gonna need some parsley flakes just to make it nice and beautiful. And we want some warm fall spices. So that would be our cinnamon and also the all spice is gonna give you that fall warmthness. Okay, and then you're gonna need some black pepper and salt. Now, alongside of our butternut squash, we're gonna make some fish. I know the fish is not the recipe that you're here for today, but let's just make some fish alongside. So I'm gonna be making up some cod, and I have some beautiful cod here, and then I have some chicken powder, a really interesting ingredient that makes fish taste amazing. We're gonna bake this fish. We have some onion powder, some garlic powder. You can't make seafood without Old Bay seasoning. We have some sweet cream butter, and then also some lemon. Make sure your hands are impeccably clean. Let's get started with this really quick and simple, yet so tasty recipe. I cannot share, I cannot wait. Get it right, Gina, spit it out. I cannot wait to share this recipe with you all. This, I, I have to say, I love, love, love squash. I love the yellow butternut squash. I love zucchini. And this one right here, it just might be my favorite. Um, so now, but I'm gonna tell you one thing. This is so hard to peel. <laughs> Guys, it's like so hard to peel, but there is a trick. So you can definitely use a vegetable peeler. I'm not gonna use a vegetable peeler today. I will be using a paring knife, but here's what we wanna do. Let's go ahead and put, poke some holes into this bad boy. I know, I know, I know. You're gonna have to use a little bit of elbow grease, guys. Get some holes in it, because here's what I wanna do. I want to put this in a microwave for three minutes. Why are you putting it in the microwave? Well, I'm putting it in the microwave so that I don't have such a hard time cutting into this bad boy. Otherwise, I would need one of the guys to take the knife and cut it open for me, okay? But this is like, ugh, we have the holes, okay? So now, let's put a hole up here, just because I feel like we need to. Let's get this in the microwave for three minutes. You don't need to turn it. So I'm gonna do just that, and when I come back after three minutes, we'll be able to easily cut down into this. Get it peeled, and I'll show you what you should do next. In the microwave we go for three minutes. All right, be back. So now our butternut squash has came out of the microwave after being cooked on high for three minutes. Now this isn't a promise that it's gonna be um, like you're just not gonna be able to slice through it like as if it was butter. That's not gonna be the situation. You're still gonna have to use, you know, a little bit of strength but it'll be much easier. So the first thing that I wanna do is we're gonna cut down into our butternut squash and get the end cut off, okay? And the second thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna come this way and we're gonna cut this other end off. Like I said, it's gonna take some time and if you don't have patience, well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you're gonna do. All right, but I tell you one thing, it's worth all of the strength that you're using. It's worth the wait to have someone else do this for you. Look at that beautiful flesh, okay? So then the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna cut down the middle just like so, so that we can have two pieces. And then what I also wanna do is I wanna take either your, your peeler or a paring knife just like so, and we're gonna cut the skin off just like so in this manner. It's gonna take me a while. So when I come back, this will be sliced in half and I'll have all the skin off just like so. 
So all together, I would say it took about 10 minutes to get everything nice and peeled. I was able to peel it and then I needed my husband's assistance to cut it. And he was able to cut it by using these two long knives, okay? So he was able to cut it down the middle for me and I'm so grateful. And then what we're gonna do, you can take a melon baller or you can just take a spoon, but we gotta get rid of the seeds. We're not eating the seeds here, you know. So just take, you know, a spoon, scoop those seeds out just like so in this manner. It smells so good. At this moment, when you have it open, you're gonna automatically think pumpkin. You're gonna think pumpkin, but it doesn't taste like pumpkin. You're just gonna really think it because it gives you that smell, you know, when you cut a pumpkin. That's the smell that I'm smelling right now. Let's get all of this seeds out just like so. And then I'm gonna show you how you need to cut up your butternut squash. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to mix together these amazing warm fall spices so we can season these up when I come back. So now that I have the seeds out of this part here, we'll go ahead and cut this into cubes. Now, I don't suggest cutting it into really, really small cubes, you know, I just don't. Because, you know, during the cooking process, it, it will shrink a little, you know, so if you make a nice size, if it shrinks, it'll still be nice size. So this is the beginning of our cubes. All right, using a little bit of strength that you have. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come through this way, watching my fingers. And we're gonna cube up the butternut squash just like so. You can make it smaller if you want it to. It's really up to you, you know. Have fun with this. This is definitely something you wanna make for your holiday. You can make it just because you wanna have something nice and healthy or, you know, make it in the fall time. It's nice, like I said, it warms you up and it makes you feel good when you eat it. This, it, how, how can I explain what it tastes like? Because I know so many of you are gonna ask that question. I wanna say this, I may not be correct, but the only way I can describe it is I feel like it has such a buttery, sweet taste. And then when you add just a little bit of salt to it, it just really sends it over the top. Kind of like a sweet potato, but not really. <laughs> but then kind of like the yellow squash. Oh yes, like both of them mixed together. It is just like a wild flavor. So now I'm gonna continue to chop this up just like so. When I come back, everything will be nice and cut up. And what I should be doing is, let's talk about this really quickly. I can put my towel that I have under here and I can wet my towel a little bit and that will prevent my um, board from moving. So I'm gonna dampen this towel just like so, that way my board can stay in place without slipping and sliding everywhere. When I come back, this will be cut up. So now we're finishing up cutting the last bit of our butternut squash, just like so. And then what we're gonna do is we want to rub some oil, any kind of oil that you like to use. You can even use a light olive oil um, on your butternut squash will be just fine. I don't suggest using butter. And the reason why I don't suggest using butter is because I feel like the butter will burn. Okay, now this is gonna take about 35 to 40 minutes in the oven on 355. Here's what we're gonna do. And the, um, the wet towel does really work. And then also, if you don't wanna use a towel, you could always use a paper towel. Okay, so let's go ahead and get some oil onto the butternut squash. It doesn't have to be a lot, okay? And then what I wanna do is I'm gonna really coat it Make sure that everything is nice and coated. And this is gonna roast in the oven and get so tasty. But not only is the oil gonna give it a great taste, what it's also gonna do is gonna help for our spices to adhere to the butternut squash. So let me wipe my hands off. We're gonna get the spices mixed together when I come back. Let's take some cinnamon. We're gonna put it into our ramekin. And the reason why I am mixing the two together with my hands is because sometimes I feel like the allspice doesn't really come out of 
this hole here. It's like I'm always trying to knock it out of the hole. So let's just take a little bit. And when you're using the allspice, you'd be very careful not to use too much. That just a little bit right there is going to give you that fall warmthness. Okay. I keep saying that word, but it's so hard to say. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go in with my fingers and just kind of mix it up just like so, that allspice and cinnamon, and then I wanna do this. Not too much. Now, some of you might say, ooh, do I have to use the cinnamon and allspice? Great question, you don't have to use it. You could use a garlic powder if you wanted to, a little bit of garlic powder, salt and pepper, and you're set. It's really up to you guys. Now listen here, I wanna talk about something. I have a video for how to make um, acorn squash. And I made it during the holiday time and everybody went nuts over it. It was like a maple flavored acorn squash. Feel free to check that video out because you can make this the way I made that. So don't forget to check that video out after this. So now that we have this nice and seasoned with not too much spice, we're gonna go in with some black pepper. You need black pepper and one other ingredient you definitely need is salt. If you decide not to use anything, you have to use salt, okay? Don't you forget that about butternut squash. All right, let's get a little bit more pepper on there. Gorgeous. And then I'm going in with sea salt. Any kind of salt you like to use, that's what you're gonna use. In the oven, 355 degrees for about 35, 40 minutes. But let's go in really quickly and go in with our hands one more time. Get those spices well distributed, just like so. And onto our baking sheet, it's just a cookie sheet. Just like so. And then we'll get started seasoning up some cod so we can have a great lunch today here at the Young's house. Just like so. So let's go ahead and season up our um, fish that we have here. This is gonna be for our lunch here today at the Young's house. A little bit of chicken powder, believe it or not, really seasons up fish and gives it an amazing flavor. So you can notice that I'm not using salt and the reason why I'm not using salt today is because that chicken powder, it has salt in it, okay? I'm gonna make sure I season it well because we wanna taste flavor. Flavor, flavor is what you're always aiming for when you're cooking just about anything. Make sure it's flavored. Okay, and then we're gonna go in with some Old Bay seasoning and you only need to season one side, you know? All right, that's beautiful, Old Bay. Parsley flakes, it's not really gonna give it flavor unless it's fresh parsley, but it gives it a nice color. We're gonna go in with some garlic powder, just like so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and some onion powder, boy am I getting excited. All right, gorgeous, and guess what? That's it. Let's go ahead, we're gonna take a little tiny bit of butter, put it in our pan, and honestly, I'm just gonna use, I'm just gonna use this frying pan here. And a tablespoon. And then we're gonna take our fish, set it right in there. And now, here's the thing. We're not gonna cook this until the last 15 minutes of the cooking process of our butternut squash. When our butternut squash only has about 15 minutes left, that's when we're gonna put this in because this is only gonna take 15 minutes in the oven. You don't need to cover it because if you cover it, you'll steam it. Now we are gonna put just a tad bit of water in the bottom of the pan and literally, it's just gonna be just a tiny bit, okay? So, the last 15 minutes this goes in the oven. Our butternut squash is gonna come out with the fish. I'm gonna say an amazing prayer. You all are gonna get that first bite. So now I did want to come back and show you all how much water I put in the bottom. I put so little bit, that little bit during this cooking process, it'll evaporate, but it'll still keep your uh, fish nice and moist. So now I did put some lemon and that lemon is gonna really infuse some great flavor down into the fish. And right on top of the lemon, you can see we put two little tads of butter. Butternut squash has cooked in the oven around 35 to 40 minutes on 355. Take a look at them. And when they're cooking, don't bother them. You don't have to go in and turn them because if you do that, they'll turn into mush. Look at this, I wanna see you. I want you all to see this crispiness. Oh, it has somewhat 
of a crunch on the outside and then it's so creamy in the inside. So that's what we have. And I do want you all to also take a look at our beautiful fish that we have here for lunch. Gorgeous fish, listen here. Don't go anywhere because I'm gonna say an amazing prayer. You all are gonna get that first bite when I come back. I'm gonna plate it up and we're gonna taste it. Take a look at it everybody, Gina Young style. Roasted butternut squash, make you some. If you all enjoyed this here video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you click on that notification bell so you can be notified every time Gina Young uploads one of these awesome recipes. Tell your family and friends and everyone you know, tell the whole world about Gina Young, what I'm doing in this kitchen on a daily basis. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we want to thank you once again for a beautiful day today. Lord, we thank you for your love, time, your mercy, and your understanding. Please forgive us for our sins. Come into our hearts. We make you our Lord and Savior. Send your angels down to surround us day and night. Your Holy Spirit to help us make good decisions. Give us peace over our minds in the name of Jesus. We pray that no weapons formed against us shall prosper. And we bind the devil away from us in Jesus' name. Devil, you have no authority over this household. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the roof over our head, the food, the love, the peace and the joy you bring us every day. Amen. Amen. Once again, to my beautiful prayer, take a look. I know there's so many of you never heard of butternut squash, never tasted it before. Now is your chance to make this recipe your family is going to go wild over it and this is perfect for the holiday go on take a bite <laughs> oh yes and then also i know i know i know you want some of that gorgeous cod look at it and i want to show you how flaky it is Ooh, when we put that butter and put that lemon on there look at this <laughs> yes and a little piece of that and as always god bless you all thank you all for watching god bless you. Good night.